Good morning. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine. Our God is an awesome God. A God of mercy and compassion. A God who constantly opens up for us opportunities to show mercy and compassion. Elijah went to Zarephath of Sidon to the house of a widow. In our time, we try to understand the pain and grief of losing your life's mate. In hearing scripture, we often fail to take into account the historical significance of widowhood in ancient times. Women could not inherit. They were completely dependent upon men for food and shelter. Once the woman left her father's house, she could not go back. She had only her husband and or her sons. Upon a man's death, the estate went to the son, not the wife. The son of the mistress fell sick and stopped breathing, we hear in our story this morning. If there was no son, the estate went to a man in the husband's family who might not need or want another woman in his life. The death of a widow's son might result in her being turned out into the street for a life of begging. Worse. Elijah, the prophet, having nothing himself except the ear of God, shows his compassion and does the only thing that he can. He calls out to God. My God, let the life breath, the ruah, or spiritus, return to the body of this child. The Lord heard the prayer of Elijah, and he revived. This act of mercy and compassion, reviving and returning a son to his mother, became a model for Jesus' own teaching and healing ministry. In the fourth chapter of Luke, Jesus refers to this incident as he takes the people to task in the temple in Nazareth. Sorry, the synagogue in Nazareth. The needs and the sufferings of outsiders, the alien, the outcast, widows, and lepers, these are the model for the ministry of Jesus. He sees these people as children of God, and therefore his brothers and sisters. And he greets them with mercy and compassion. In today's gospel, Jesus comes across a situation very similar in character to that which Elijah faced. Entering the city of Nain, Jesus observes a funeral procession of a widow's only son. He is moved with pity for her. In my study, I've learned that the phrase moved with pity might be more accurately translated from the Greek as he felt a deep physical response in his bowels or his gut. At that time, the emotions of pity and love were thought to be centered in the lower abdomen. So it should be translated as a much stronger emotion than the head knowledge that this woman was in trouble. <coughs> he tells her, do not cry. He goes directly to the coffin and touches it and commands the dead man to rise. Mercy and compassion from his gut. 
Jesus relieves her grief, but more importantly, provides an opportunity for her continued well-being. The widow of Zarephath recognized God's work through Elijah. The people of Nain saw the actions of Jesus and declared, God has visited his people. These actions and stories foreshadow another widow and mother when her only son was taken from her in an unjust and early death, leaving her and many other in tears and in mourning. He returned, however, and his return brings joy and rejoicing and inspiration, not in just the Marys who were present at the tomb, but also to Peter and to the other apostles, and later to Paul and through Paul to all of us. They and we are no longer bearers in a funeral procession, but we are called to and brought to new life, a life of mercy and compassion. Unlike Elijah or Jesus, we cannot bring back the dead sons of widows. But still, we are given an example to follow. Examples of mercy and compassion. As we heard in our reading from Galatians, the gospel preached is not of human origin. Power and control and strength and me first, those are the ideals that our culture teaches. Those are of human origin. The gospel teaches that the heart of Jesus is strength, is mercy for the helpless and compassion for the weak. Jesus and Elijah understood that feeding or housing a widow for a day or a week or a month, that wouldn't do. Only a long-term solution shows real mercy. And so the question is, how are we doing for long-term commitments against victimization, bullying, or human trafficking and slavery, against racism, poverty, and hunger? Men, women, and children who are released from the bonds of poverty and suffering share in the resurrection of Jesus in our world. This is the model for us. This is what we're called to be for those in need. So what can each of us do about to bring about the resurrection of Jesus today? Jesus felt mercy and compassion from his gut. What do you feel in your gut? Can we be committed to a long-term solution?